Hey guys, welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be doing a disassembly on this Double Eagle UTR556. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this video today, please do like, comment and subscribe because those interactions help the channel get seen by the algorithms which helps them grow. If you'd like to support the channel a little bit more, then the channel memberships are enabled down below. That is just 99 pence a month or whatever's equivalent in your currency. And for that, you get custom videos, bloopers, your own giveaways, your own private chat area. Uh, and I regularly put posts out to those um what I refer to as pheasants, um, for get help, questions and guidance on what I should do with the channel and stuff like that. Totally optional, massively appreciated if you did do it. Um, please also use the link tree link down below to go and visit my Discord, all my socials, my gaming channel and my Fez merch store, which has now launched, which is selling all sorts of um, hoodies, t-shirts, beanie, patches and gun tags and things like that. So if you're looking for a little bit of Fez merch, go check it out. We do ship all over the world. So welcome back. Today then we're going to do a disassembly on the Double Eagle M916G, uh, the UTR556, basically to have a look at what's inside. Uh, so thanks again to Mike for uh, letting me use this to unbox and to disassemble as well. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the front end intact. I'm just going to talk through this front end because it is actually covered in the manual as well. Uh, but to Get the muzzle brake off, you have got a teeny tiny little grub screw right there. So you just need to undo that. This will come off, it's a negative thread, so you would not screw it on off the normal way you would with a screw. It comes off the opposite way. You've then got a screw here, which needs to be removed. That is a Torx, quite a small Torx. That will release this front end, which should start sliding off once you've removed the two Allen keys at the back. What you might have to do, part way down, is release this little Allen key bolt in here and this one in here, and that releases this gas block uh, and gas tube inside of here, so all this front end comes off. And down here you'll find there is a standard sort of barrel nut uh, and threading that you just unscrew, and the outer barrel can come off as well. In terms of the front sight then, again, little um, hex head or uh, Allen key just dropped in there, unscrew, uh, and it will release this little bolt and this will slide off. And the same with the rear one as well. Little Allen key bolt in here, undo it and this will slide off. What I'm going to do now is look at taking the upper off. So we've got quite nice easy to hold bolts on one side right there. So I'm just going to have to put an Allen key of some variety in that side. Let's try that. So that's a number three Allen key bit I've used and it worked perfectly. Now, as you're taking things out, make sure you put them together because you don't want to lose things and separate things. Now, that's a little bit hard to push out, so I'm just going to push a screwdriver in, and I'm just going to... There we go. Now, instantly, I've seen there that it's pushing itself open. That's good that the spring on the barrel is keeping it all compressed to help maintain a good air seal. So I'm just going to hold that up out of the way just so it doesn't catch a little bit. I'm just going to slide it. You might need to do a little bit of wiggling as it's coming out to separate it. So I'll get rid of that in a minute. Now Anzu asked specifically about the hop arm and nub. So there is our barrel assembly. A little bit mucky, but nothing too drastic. Um, I will turn it on. That, hopefully you can see that. Right down there. There we go. That is it fully on it was hopping 2000 absolutely like bliss basically it is kind of like a split um tension that's coming down so it's kind of like almost like shaped a little bit like a w i suppose uh, down there hopefully you can see that clearly enough in there so what i'm going to do is just show you how to remove the hop rubber so we're just going to slide this little uh, barrel centralizing um lug off the end this c clip then just pulls down and out like that and it sat in that orientation like that and then this should literally just ooh, wiggle side to side just nice and gently and it slides off and out there is our hot rubber 
which is, there we go, comes off. And uh, hopefully, I don't know if the camera will pick that up. I can see it obviously on myself, but um, it looks, it's like kind of uh, comes round and then it goes in flat, comes back out and out, out again. So that's the hot rubber. When you put in a new hot rubber in, they always have like a little line in the bottom that sticks up and barrels have a line cut out into them. That is to make sure that they are centralized in the correct position. So I'll just slot that back in there. That's all good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this C-clip off here and I should be able to hook into there. So I've just used the hole at the top there to pull on this C-clip to pull it out. I'm just gonna wiggle the adjustment wheel off. Now this track here is what sits on this little catch here to lower and raise the hop arm. And I'm just gonna push that out if it'll go. There we go, there we go, so there is the hop arm and tensioner, so it's almost like a little figure of eight that's hooked into the hop arm there for people to see, there we go, I seem to think it's, did the old Masadas used to do this? Um, I seem to think that's something like the, they used to get on the Masadas. So I'm just going to push that back in and reseat that. Hanzu, uh, Hanzu, Anzu, I hope that has made you happy, young man. So I've just lined the hole back up so I can see that it adjusts like that. I'm going to leave it pushed out. I'm then going to push the barrel in. So there's the hot feed tube. The line that the hot rubber sat on is there and I'm just going to wiggle them back together and it goes in nice and easy. Now this clip, if it's seated right, this sort of little gouge in the barrel here should sit basically flush back against this bit here on both sides. Look, might just need twisting a little bit to get it central, at which point then I can drop back in that C clip which will only go one way around. There we go. And if I put the hop adjustment wheel back on, gearing to get those thing if i turn the hop fully on i can see in there that the hot rubber is all happy i can then put the c-clip back in place it shouldn't really make a difference which way around it goes all sorts and the last bit is bringing in the little centralizer and that's just going to slide in there happy moving on then so next thing we do is going to remove the stock pull on the lugs to remove the stock and we've got an allen key head down there. I'm gonna have to go and get my extender bar. Right, so I've got my extender bar. I'm just trying to find the right size bit to get down there. So what is that one? Just tried so that's a number four and it is a number four that is a damn good guess Fez I recently had a couple of messages asking uh, me uh, how do you pronounce the channel name so it's spelt Fez as in pheasant and it said like Fez as in the little red hat that um, one of the characters from Ren and Stimpy used to wear uh, the little red fez so it's said like f-e-z fez um just in case people are wondering so i'm just going to drop the little silver retainer out so we've got the screw and the pin uh, the retainer and the screw in there which was out of position um and it does look like it's a little bit crimpy on there it looks like the uh, heat shrink has done its job though and it's taken that damage on there We've then actually got, so if I remove the uh, plate at the back, that is a standard AEG type, more or less. So you should be able to replace this with one that has a sling loop if you wanted on the back there. So I can then get into changing the quick change spring. So it's an actual real life quick change spring that can actually be quick changed. So I'm just gonna sink my screwdriver into there. I'm gonna push 
quarter twist anti-clockwise and then out comes the spring and the spring guide and there is our spring and spring guide and it is a bearing based as well to help the spring sort of um, as you compress it they try to un sort of twist and the bearing base helps it do that to keep it sort of in a healthier condition now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the base plate I'll just move a couple of these bits so we need quite a small not that small that small so this is a number two size hex head Again, making sure that you keep the screws together in a, in a plate way and order that you know where everything's come from and what they're doing. That's that gone. In that case, the front one, I can get it. This is the front one, this is the back one. The front one was a shorter screw than the back one out of the motor base plate, just to keep that in mind. So make sure that it's important that you keep them sort of organized so you know which is which and compare them. There's the motor plate, it only goes on one way. And there's our motor then. Looks like somebody has crimped it a little bit. So I'm aware that these typically come out of the box at about 400. So lift that out. There's our standard DE motor. Nice and fairly good quality. I'm guessing that's a manufacture date, 23rd of November 2020. On the motor. Next, I need a Phillips head to get down there and undo the two screws that are in the pistol grip. So we've got two. We've got one down in this corner and one up in this corner as well. Uh, they are both the same size and shape um, and if you can get at least one to stay inside the pistol grip then that's always helpful. Now at this bit make sure you unhook the wires inside the pistol grip because you don't want to slide this off particularly if it's stiff and rag those and damage them in some way shape or form. So I've pulled those down, pulled those out and that can go there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the um, mag release, which is, I'm guessing, possibly another number two. No, it's smaller. So this is a 1.5 Allen key bit. I would have liked that to be like a Phillips head because it makes my life easier. But 1.5, there goes the spring. And then the mag catch just drops out the other side and it is a metal mag catch. I'm guessing I'm going to have to remove this. So it looks like it needs to go out that way. So I've just got a really thin punch and I'm just going to tap that out. And it did go out that way. Oh, that was a good guess. And I should now that the teeth are out of the way be able to pull that out of the way. Yeah, can just get enough. I don't know if you notice them, but that's sprung. So the teeth, there are tiny little teeth on this pin and the teeth are on this side of it. So I'm just gonna put that down there. I'm just gonna lift that out of the way and it is on a spring, which caused it to spring out. Now, um, I've got a rear body pin, I'm guessing Probably going to have to unscrew these and remove these. So let's get rid of the rear body pin first. What I'm going to have to do is, if I can, I'm going to have to get some pliers on this. I can't quite, I haven't got the uh, dexterity or strength in my fingers to keep hold of that enough. So I'm just going to get some um, just needle nose to hold those. So, got my needle nose. I'm literally just going to pinch hold of that. This way it gets a bit awkward. Ooh, see. Get that. There we go. And I just needed to get enough purchase on it that I could uh, overcome the, the friction that was holding it together. So that comes out. Again, I'm gonna make sure that that one goes specifically with this one. That's quite stiff, punched out. So there's my real one. 
Um, usually, what you find, this is a front pin because it's got a flat edge here, and that's a rear body pin because it's got a circle, it's round. So a front body pins on ARs typically have this flattened off side, typically, not always. Now I am guessing, and I'm absolutely certain, that we're gonna have to take out the selectors. So let's switch number four for what is that? Is that a number two again? That is a number two. So we're going to be very, very careful with this. Let's just jump in. It's because it's hex fairs. Oh dear lord, what are you doing? Right. Hex eight. See, just to prove even professionals get it wrong, and if they ever claim that they're perfect, they're lying. Even that's jumping. Problem resolved, turned out my T8 was slightly rounded from one set of tools, uh, and uh, the brand new fresh one was absolutely perfect and caught it straight away. So always make sure that your tools get replaced whenever you need to. So I'm just gonna be very careful because what I'm aware of is if I lift this up, there comes the screw, and I lift this off now, this is going to potentially do exactly that. Oh, and I've seen it as well. So there's our selector that is shaped in such a way there is two little prongs there that go into the two little gaps on that little disc in there. There is the little clicker, as it were, that sits in there and clicks into these holes on the receiver to give you the, the clicking sound when it gets in position. I'm just gonna undo this one. And then there shouldn't be one under here. Lift that off generally. Now, this is a different style selector. This has got the indent on the selector on this side and the disc is lifted up and out in there. So I know that they're two very different ones. And that should, famous last words, oh, we've still got the trigger, is that actually a screw? Now, it looks like a screw, but I actually think it's just a pin. I'm just gonna, it is just a bit, wow, okay. That confused the hell out of me. So it looks like a screw, but it's actually just the trigger pin. I was throwing a little bit then that there is a trigger pin. So now the gearbox should be released, but it's not because we've got the select, the uh, bolt release here, which is a little Phillips head in there. So I'm just gonna get an appropriate small Phillips head. I'm just going to be very careful to lift this up. Now, if I push on that slightly, this is all coming up and out, and I should be able to, there we go, lift that assembly up and out in one piece. So that assembly looks like that. And it just hooks together. The spring goes onto this little notch here. Little notch here. Like so. And sits under there like that. And then it screws down. So I'm going to keep that together to save myself hassle later. And then finally, there is our gearbox. Now as it's come out, I've grabbed these little gears. Now this is just like the um, UTG that we had. The uh, SMG type. I'm just going to keep them together. Now, that is the safe position. So we've got this shape here needs to sit like that. That is the safe position. And if I bring the selector in, I can see that that sits in like that and it is the correct position for that. The flip side of that then, I'll keep that in one piece. Oh, and it moved, God damn it. is there like that 
that's the safe on this side. Okay, so I'm just going to take this one off. This one will lift up and out. Will generally stay in place, but we'll need some lifting out. And then this is connected on a little rod through here, and that just literally needs prying apart like we did last time. And we've got a little D-shape on one side. There we go. And that fits into the D-shape on this side. We've then got one final thing. We've got this little tiny spring here to lift up and out. Like that. That's a big spring, isn't it? Big little spring. So that was shaped, hooked in there, around that post, and it sat under here. Put that down there and use a little Phillips head. Take that off. Lift that off. And move the spring to sit with it so I know it goes on later. And then we are free to get into the gearbox. So we've got a bearing on the bottom. We've got metal bushings on the top two, quite thick, large ones. We've got a metal selector plate, which does not have a sticker underneath, I don't believe. Mm. No, there, there appears to be evidence that there is a sticker under there, actually. Uh, and then we've got the optical sensors here that detect where the selector is sitting. So I'm going to unscrew this. Which I'm finding is a Torx 8 by the looks of it. Remember to keep them all in the correct order uh, to save hassle later so you know exactly where they come from just in case there is any discrepancies in sizes. So we're into the gearbox now, because the spring's out, we took, took it out, I can literally just push and separate. There it goes. And there we go. And we see the typical um, double eagle quality in there. So it does look like they've used a little bit of hot glue just to hold the wiring down and out the way of the motor, which is all nicely intact. The gears showing some good signs of shimming. The uh, piston is looking good. A little bit of grease. It's generally well greased in there. Lift the top side of the um, Mosma fet off. So you've got the little arch here that you can see. These are the optical sensors that are picking up the trigger, pulling forward and catching. You've got the optical sensor here for the sector gear going round, or one of two. Uh, there's one on the bottom half of the board as well. A loose shim that I'm guessing has just pinged off the uh, sector gear there. So I'm just going to lift out the... Right, I'll come with me. Oh, that really doesn't want to come out, does it? There we go. Just lift out the uh, cylinder assembly and top it plate. So just in case you didn't know, it's over there. This is your air nozzle that obviously helps to push BBs into the hot chamber and then air is pushed down this to push the BB out of the barrel. This is called your tap it plate, also because it tap it, yeah, get it, it's tapping the BBs in. This is the cylinder head, so it's the head of the, the cylinder, so the air is compressed out of here. This is a vented type cylinder and then inside here we've got our piston and our piston head uh, and we've got a three metal tooth piston and it's got a tooth removed basically for to help with angle of engagement so on here we've got an o-ring that's well greased and the idea is that we're looking for is that we put our finger on the cylinder head and we should only get so far and then we shouldn't be able to force the air out and i'm really <laughs> sure it if you didn't know i've had a car accident lately and uh, my chest is uh, in a lot so doing that the compression needed to force that together is is hurting uh, but that is absolutely excellent compression. So the next thing I'm looking for is with the air nozzle on, extended slightly, I will be able to get the air in, but it's, even that, there is quite a lot of pressure needed to force that down and out. So the air seal 
throughout this system, as we've seen with other DEs, is really good. The other question I get asked about is, does it really matter where this window sits? As long as it's in this side or this side and it's not hidden inside the gearbox anywhere, it doesn't really matter where this window sits uh, when it's back together. So now that we're happy with that, we're happy with the general quality, the gearbox the gears are fairly standard quality, good effort at shimming by the looks of it, we're going to reassemble it. So I've got the tappet plate is sitting holding the air nozzle. I've got the tappet plate spring, which I'm going to hook onto this little hook here. And I'm going to hook it onto the little pin here and drop it down. What I am going to do, because it's really helpful, is I'm going to spin these gears round and I'm going to get this last tooth of the sector gear just over the top there because it keeps it out of the way of the piston and I'll show what I mean by that in a second. So I'm just going to push that back against the tappet spring and I'm going to push the tappet spring down. So now, now that's back in position, I've just pushed this spring right down on this little peg here and making sure this tappet plate is sitting in this track here so as i push it you should be able to see that it's sitting down in a track down there now it will when whilst you're trying to rebuild trying to lift itself up and out that's normal it's to be expected and you will fight with it the other thing to watch out for is this anti-reversal latch which is sat on a spring the spring is actually on this occasion not fighting me but it loops round and it sits up against this post here and it's pushing this latch against this gear so that as I turn it, you'll hear the click and it's stopping the gear set winding backwards, which is a good thing. What I've done then with the, the sector gear is I've moved the teeth out the way of this piston, which is currently not sat on its track. So the track here, these two little runners are where these two things should sit on the piston. So I'm just gonna lift it gently and sit it down and that will slide nicely up and down there. There's another track on the other half. The other thing as well is making sure that the cylinder um, sits flush along this bit down here. I'll show you once the sides are on. So I'm gonna drop the top half of the MOSFET back in. I'm gonna carefully drop the top side of the gearbox in, which has basically gone together more or less perfectly. Stopping it, famous last words. There we go. So when, once it's together, you're making sure that the cylinder is sitting flush on both sides of here, which it is done. And I can now screw this back together. Absolutely happy with that. Now, if you want to check if um, things are working, if you've split the top off, if your gun's not feeding, for example, if you push on this and it's not springing back, then it could be something's wrong with the connection around here. If that is springing back, but the gun's still not feeding, and it's definitely not jamming, then it could be that that tappet plate has broken, like the fin at the end has snapped off, so it's something to think about. So this is the part now where I start forgetting little random bits that I've not put on it. So first of all, I'm gonna drop this on. So I'm gonna put the spring in first. So the spring is orientated, just sits in there like that. I'm then gonna bring this back in, which catches hold of it. Uh. There we go. So the spring is sat and just coming out, out, out here. So it's under compression that it's springing up and down and it's going to spring off. I'm not quick. So I'm going to drop that in place. I'm then going to get I can spot one, a suitable Phillips head. Now, I want it to be tight, but I don't want it to be too tight that that doesn't move. So I'm going to tighten it down 
as long as that's free moving, which it is with little to no pressure, which it is, I'm convinced that that's absolutely the right place. Happy with that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to reseat the two little gears. In fact, before I put so just run it through this hole here. It just drops in like that. I'm going to drop this one into place first, the main selector, and I'm going to put it into the safe position. There we go. So that's now back in the safe position. Bring the other half of this little cog in. There we go. So now that's sat in the safe position. I'm going to flip that over. I'm keeping that locked as best as I can in place. I'm going to drop that little cog in. Now it does appear that the back one, so the two little notches, there is a much bigger one and a smaller, thinner one. So the bigger one was at the back, I believe, uh, which we'll find out in a minute, won't we? Stay tuned for more fun with Fez. So I'm going to bring in the receiver. This is going to be the tricky bit. So because the other one is generally quite well held in place, I'm going to hold the receiver like this. And I'm going to gently lower these in. Again, try my absolute best to not mess too much with these selectors. Oh, do you know what I've done? I have not fed that in. I'm now looking around making sure that everything that should be in on the gearbox is in and on the gearbox. The only thing that isn't is the fan because it's a spring guide. Now I can feel that that's been caught then. So it's just a case of this is literally just a massive juggling act to getting things sat in position with a minimal of moving and never. Oh my Lord, it's actually worked. Wow, okay. Wow, sweet. I am happy with that. So the next thing I'm gonna do before I cry uh, and get too happy about it, is I'm going to bring in this assembly, which again, I'm just going to put that down in a minute, just to remind you that this little spring sits on that little peg right there, and they interconnect like that, and we're just going to drop this in and screw it down. And that interacts... Uh, he says as he's making an absolute meal of it I always feel like it's important to show this stuff because it shows you that well I'm doing it floating up in the air I'm not actually doing it on, on the table which I should be doing um, but it's to illustrate to you guys but it's to show that you know nobody's perfect nobody gets this right 100% of the time and that it is fiddly but if you take time and patience, you can get this right and you can do it yourself in most cases. There we go. So finally got that seated in position. I'm going to get the little Phillips head. So then I'm going to secure that back down. And that is correctly operating against that, which is what we want. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help myself out. I'm gonna put the rear body pin back in. And I'm gonna tighten that down loosely for now and I'll tighten it back off shortly once I'm a little bit further along um, and I've got this lower receiver back together. I will drop the pin back in as well to make sure that that goes in. There we go, that's back in place. Next thing we've got is the connector that goes through there. So the bolt release, so that drops straight through and there is a little square hole appear that that nicely will just connect into. And the pin for this, if you remember, the teeth were on that this side of it. So I'm gonna push the non-teeth ending first until it lines up nicely boom and then I'm going to use that to 
push that back in I've been able to just push that back in without any tapping or anything so that's gone back in place now and it's operating the catch there lovely uh, the mag catch can go back in in a second what we're going to do now is we're going to put the selectors back on so I'm going to carefully turn this one over so we don't lose the little clicker pin and it should just nicely sit into those little notches that it's designed to sit in I'm going to get my Torx 8 and then what I'm doing is I'm just trying to hold down the selector as best as I can without getting my finger nicked while I'm screwing this in and I'm just screwing it in there we go that's one side in beautiful bring in the other side it does look like I'm right that the back one is larger and the front one is smaller again just wiggle it around it will sort of drop into a, a, a position you'll know it's sort of in there when it, it kind of drops in and you'll feel it there there it is and drop that screw in right and then working absolutely perfect I am happy with that so we can now put the mag release in so drop it in from that side we drop the spring on we bring the top part uh, the button in and the screw we need the 1.5 bit to screw that in Make sure that's tightened now and that's working nicely looking good at this point i'm now going to put the spring and the spring guide in so we're just going to drop that back in exactly how it came out i'm going to use the uh, flathead to help me get it, to get it down in there Once you've slotted it in, don't forget to quarter turn, twist it clockwise. There we go. That sits in position then. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is the pistol grip. So I'm going to flip it over, bring the pistol grip in. So the black wire comes up the front, uh, into the front hole of the pistol grip. The red wire comes in at the back. Like that. And just gently feed those wires up make sure they are not crimped underneath the um, pistol grip you should see them straight out the gearbox up the pistol grip and then we're just going to um, screw those down that one make sure when you put a screw in you screw it the wrong way first until you get the click so you know it's clicked into the threads and then screw it forward so I'll show you what I mean get that into the hole so I'm going to screw it backwards so it's going listen that click now I know it's into the threads properly screw it forward if there's any real tough resistance with those sorts of screws then there's something not right and you need to do something about that quite uh, urgently so at this point then the black wire is going to go, I can organise it properly, there we go, you need to push the black wire to go that way to the back of the pistol grip, hopefully you can see that in there, and then it comes up this the same route as the red wire, you can then drop the motor in the red, is going to be at the back, the red terminal, which we're going to click on first and then the black wire reaches back round again 
and sits onto the black terminal at the front. Easy peasy. Then we bring the motor plate in. We just sit that in and it should be nice and loose and springy like that. Now don't forget that the front screw was the smaller screw. So we're just going to hold it down with my finger while I screw the first one in. Then get the other screw. Well, comes it tonight. That's the, those both in now. So I am happy with how this is going. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in the um, what's technically a sling plate. Now there is a slanted bit here, and that sits inside protecting the wiring. So this circular bit should be hung out. The slanted bit is helping to keep the wiring safe so it goes directly into the right position. It's not nipped. Then I'm going to bring in the um, buffer tube, which I'm going to slot down. And it will go on to those two lugs right there like that. It's not, it shouldn't be able to rotate or anything. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this screw and plate in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the wiring to sort of keep it where it needs to be. And I'm just going to sort of juggle that around a little bit. And it will eventually drop in the right place. Now, I can see that this sort of semicircle retaining plate has gone out of position. So what I'm going to try and do is just rotate it a little bit. And then I'm going to use the... So I'm winding backwards until I get the click that tells me I'm in the threads. There we go. That's still not quite at the right place. There we go. I'll move that to a better place in. Still going back anyway. So the wiring comes up, up and in now, happy days. The buffer tube is nice and secure. The stock can now go back on. Again, just pulling down on those tabs to let it on. And then we've got adjustment. And then we're just gonna bring this on. Just bear with me one second. Sorry about that, slight like the uh, disruption there. So the barrel assembly and the hop, there is a spring down in there which should have retained in there, but if not, it just slides on the barrel. The barrel and hop slide in, it should be nice and springy. Make sure you've turned your hop fully off. And then the lower and the upper just literally slide together, making sure you're keeping that up and out of the way. Now you will need to wiggle them and it should sit flush back together, at which point then you get your semicircled bolt front body pin. And you might need to give it a little bit of a tap to get it back in there. That's back flush. There we go. So that's gone in now, and then I can tighten that up. So that is it, fully reassembled, ready to go again. Hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, finding out just how good a quality they are once again internally. D, uh, Double Eagle, if you're watching this, thoroughly impressed with what you're doing. Absolutely love the stuff that you're coming out with of late. 
really, really great quality. I love what you're doing for the, the sport and the industry. Um, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Visit my merch store and the links are all down below in the description. And other than that, I will see you next time. Bye.